Hi, doing a quick little video on finding maximum and minimums uh, or critical points using the first derivative. Okay, so this is basically first derivative test where we want to find out, well, how can we graph this um, picture, uh, equation, uh, expression, if you will, in a more logical sense, but using, instead of using negative b over 2a, finding the vertex, or uh, doing a completing the square type system, how can we use the first derivative in calculus to let us know where some maximum and minimums are? Well, here are some strategies for us. What we can do is, one, take the first derivative of the function. All right, seems pretty uh, simple. Then set that derivative equal to zero, okay? Why zero? Pause the video and ask yourself that question. Why would I want to set the derivative equal to zero? Okay, well, let me an help you answer that. Well, if we plug a number back into that uh, derivative, we'll either get a positive or a negative, or a zero or undefined. Now, positive slopes, right, if you recall, so I can do it this way, uh, positive slopes are here, uh, and negative slopes there. So, uh, or no, if you're looking at me, this would be a positive slope and a negative slope. And zero slope, undefined slope. All right, there you go. Now, what we want to look at is that we want to set it equal to zero because we want to know where there is horizontal line or no slope. We solve for x once we do that. If x to some nth power, then we know we should have a maximum, a minimum number of n minus 1, uh, approximately that number of maximum and minimums. So, for instance, if it's a cubic, then we should see the n minus 1 or 2 turns and 1 max or 1 min or something along that. If it's to the fourth power, then we should hopefully see three maximum or minimums, okay? Three times where the curve turns. Number four, we're going to substitute that value into the original function. And once we get that x value, we plug it back in, and we will find the y value of where that critical point is. All right, well, let's see an, uh, an example. Example number one. We have f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 2x cubed. Well, that's f. You know, if we take the first derivative, f prime of x is 4x cubed minus 6x squared. And we set that equal to 0. We can factor out a 2x squared, which leaves us 2x minus 3 equals 0. And we find out that our two zeros are at x equals 0 and x equal 3 halves. Now, if I want to know what the y values are, then I simply plug it back in. So that 1 at 0, so we get a y value of 0. So we know we have 1 max or minimum at 0, 0. Plug in 3 halves, we get negative 27 over 16, which is about 1.23 something. So here we go. What we can do is we can draw in a graphical representation. So here's what the graph looks like based on my test values and what the uh, accompanying slope is. I know that at 0 and at 3 halves, there is no slope. It's flat, right? A horizontal line. Uh, now, the tangent line would be horizontal, excuse me. So what I want to do is I want to test numbers before, in between, and after those critical values or those uh, values where the horizontal line is, the tangent line is 0. If I plug in a negative 1, I'm going to get a positive slope. I urge you to plug it back into the slope formula, not your function, uh, because we want to know what the slope is. If I go to positive 1, I'm going to get a negative value. And if I go to beyond 3 halves, I will end up getting a positive value. So I chose 2. So here's what the graph does. We know we've got a critical value at 0, 0. And we know we have 1 at 3 halves, negative 27 16 So the graph must come in here to 0 and then kind of swoop down a little bit more and then come back out through. All right, so that's a graphical representation of 
that information. Now, example number two is this. Find the maximum and minimum values using the first derivative. We've got 4x cubed minus 9x squared minus 120 plus 25. Take the first derivative, 12x squared minus 18x minus 120. Set it equal to zero. Factor out a common factor of six. And now we get six times two x plus five times x minus four once you factor it out. You wanna know how that factored? Pause the video, go back and regroup and see if you can figure out what the factors are. Next, we get one x value of a negative five over two and another x value at four. What are their respective y values? Respective y values are 206.25, plugging it into a calculator, which seems to be a relative max, and a negative value of 343. Now, we can't always assume that because it has a positive or a negative value that it's a relative max or min. So what do we do? Well, we have to find out and look at a graphical or another type of representation would be a linear representation. So what we do is on a line, we plug in our negative 5 halves and 4. We have our test values here in red, negative 3, 0, and 5. So those are our test values. And I urge you to pause the video again, plug in some of these numbers or substitute the values in to your slope, right? Put it into your slope and see if you get these values out. Well, when I plugged in negative 3, I got a positive slope. When I plugged in 0, I got a negative slope. And when I plugged in 5, I got a positive slope again. So the graph in a linear fashion might look like something like this. It's going positive to the negative 5 halves value, and then negative slope back down. And then once we reach negative 343, then it's starting to go up again or a positive slope. So it must have this relationship between. And that makes sense uh, for a cubic uh, because cubics typically behave that way. Anyway, uh, go back, rewind that, check it out. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks.